Hello and welcome back to another episode of Life Rewired, the Brain Injury Podcast. My name is Rob and joining me today is Ashley. Hi, Ashley. Hi. And show us your shirt. That's so festive. Melakamiki Maka. I'm dreaming of a Hawaiian Christmas. It's so cold here. <laughs> What's the temperature there? 40 something degrees. It's 5 4 here. <laughs> 54? Yeah. Yes. And that's a great way before we go any further, because I don't want to confuse our, our audience. If you hear me say numbers that are weird sometimes, for whatever reason it is, my numbers come out weird. Um, matter of fact, my uh, my therapist, and it's probably backwards on the screen. Yes, it is. You can't see that, can you? I have a brain injury. Please be patient with me. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So I carry one of these in my wallet. So say if I'm out at the store and I want to buy a gift card for somebody for five zero dollars, I show them this card. And then when I ask for the amount, they'll repeat back to me what they interpret me saying. So it's really cool because it cuts down on the confusion. It cuts down on people thinking, well, this guy's an idiot or this guy's drunk or <laughs> what have you. So, yeah. So if there's anyone out there that suffers from the same symptoms as I do with that, that's a good way to um, overcome that obstacle. So today's episode is going to be about memory issues. And I have uh, titled today's show, Dude, Where's My Cell Phone? Dude! <laughs> And before we go into all of the issues, I think you have a comical story. We'll, we'll say it's comical because it had a really good outcome. Nothing bad happened. So share your, your little story from over the weekend. Oh, so over the weekend, um, I had no recollection that I had actually filled my cup of coffee up with like dishwater and put it in the sink to hand wash it since it's not dishwasher safe. And a little while later, I see it in the sink. And of course, the top is one of those where it's concealed. And I'm thinking, oh, I think this still has coffee left in it. Why did I put it in the sink? Let me have a taste. Well, I realized when I swallowed what I had done. So, yeah, that's a perfect memory example for you. Mm -hmm. Just went right out the window. <laughs> it happens. And I'm sure a lot of people who watch this can sympathize with you because I'm sure they've done something similar. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so I went to Vanderbilt um, Medical University's website and I got done some examples of memory issues and... I'm going to read these off this paper, but I will also put this up on the screen so the people at home can read along with me. But here's some examples of memory issues from, from that website. So forgetting important details of a conversation, such as remembering to pass along a phone message. Pretty simple. Forgetting where you left things like keys, a cell phone, or a planner, or drinking a cup of dishwater. <laughs> Um, feeling unsure of what you did or said that morning, yesterday, or last week. This can lead you to saying things or asking the same questions many times, which I don't know if, do you still have cognitive issues with your memory, Ashley? I have long-term, short-term memory loss. Well, sorry, that's kind of contradictory, but yes, um, we did testing and there's short-term memory loss as a result of my uh, concussion. Yeah, and then, of course, your concussion can also block out things from your past too. So you could actually have long-term and short-term because mm. there's, there's some pieces of my past that I myself don't recall. And my wife will say, well, you should know this because you were there. Well, I, I mean, yeah, she can say I was there and this was prior to my, um, my brain injury. So I, I had my brain injury three years ago and um, there's a few things from prior to to that time 
like funerals, for example, that, you know, I think she said, I, I'll, I'll gotta give you an example real quick, and then we'll go back to the list. <clears throat> but um, this just happened a couple of nights ago. Uh, we went to, I went to Panera Bread to pick up a to-go order for us. And while I was there, I saw my wife's Aunt Gail. So I'm standing there and I yell across the room, Gail. And she just sits there and I yelled again, Gail. Wouldn't even look up at me. I'm like, well, that's odd. You know, did I do something to her? So I just got her order and I left and came back home. And when I told her, she said, no, Rob, that was not Aunt Gail. Because Aunt, Aunt Gail died in 2019. 2019. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So that was, my accident was in 2020. Yeah. 2020. Right. So it, it does happen. I, I think it does. Maybe it tries to block out some of your painful memories. I, I don't know, but I, the mind is just a fascinating thing and how it works. So losing track of time or feeling unsure of what day it is. Oh, how ironic that that's the next one on the list. That was totally not planned. <laughs> you have a story? No. Okay. Just what happened a minute oh, ago. Track of Point in case. <laughs> uh, being unable to retrace a route that you took earlier in that day. I do have a story I can share with you for that, but I'll keep going. Forgetting all or part of what you read in a book or what you saw in a movie. That's a big one for me. Right. Sometimes um, I have to go back and reread the page because it's like, wait, what did I just read? Do you find that your comprehension, even though you keep rereading it, sometimes it just does not click? Yeah, I, I have to have a lot of help with people um, explaining things to me because I've found more often than not, um, like when someone's being sarcastic with me, I don't pick up on it. Sometimes it just goes completely over my head because I take mm. things literal. I really do. And it's frustrating for my wife. I, I will tell you that because before the brain injury, everything was perfectly fine. Oh, and that's another thing that's, um, wanted to point out. Um, my husband actually met me after I had sustained the brain injury, so I have one perspective and you have another perspective with your significant other. Right. That's true. Cause see your husband only knows you from who you the are. Injury. Now. Right. Right. And then my wife has this whole span of me prior and she misses that joking Rob, which I I've gotten some of that back. But the old Rob was constant joking, constant joking, constant sarcasm. Mm -hmm. And she doesn't have that anymore. So it's like she's living with a completely different person. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, here we go again. This is a perfect example for number memory. four. I think we're on one, two, three, four. Uh, forgetting all or part of what you've read in a book or saw in a movie. I think. Oh, we just that. talked about that. Oh my goodness. Number five. I'm sorry. <laughs> Here I was thinking I was counting and I miscounted. I need to watch Sesame Street again and have the count teach me one Christmas tree. Ah, 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 two Christmas tree. That's so funny. Things you can do to help. Now, this is a biggie, and we're going we're gonna to get really in-depth on this on the next episode. But this is from Vanderbilt. Things that you can do to help with your memory issues. Uh, get rid of distractions before starting on something that you want to remember. Like ensuring your spouses are in different rooms of the house so you can film this podcast. <laughs> right. <laughs> Is your spouse home today? He's out. I made sure that uh, there would be no like interruptions. I didn't kick him out. He chose to go out. <laughs> and I haven't seen your cat in the background today. Is, is she? Yeah, not no, she's in. She's resting in bed. It's too cold. So <laughs> we'll see if she comes too. out before we're done. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
I'm surprised mine's not banging on the door because they do that a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, ask people to talk slower or repeat what they said to make sure you understand it, which you shouldn't have to ask people to talk slower. But if you have a person that's just like one of those talkers, you might just want to say to them, this is editing Rob in my head. You just might want to say to, something to them along the lines of, I, I know you're trying to make a point um, and I want to understand you and remember this. So can you, um, can you talk a little slower or can you repeat what you just said in mm -hmm. a shorter sentence? You know, I mean, if, if you're dealing with a brain injury and a person knows this more than likely, they're going to be sympathetic to you and do that. And if they're not just kick them out of your life because they don't need to be dragging you down anyway. <laughs> okay. Give yourself extra time to practice, repeat or rehearse information that you need to remember. That's a, a that's a good one, but I, I kind of disagree with that a little bit because if you're having a memory issue and you're rehearsing it by the time you get to it, unless you've like completely spent your whole day trying to, get it to go into your head. I don't feel like it's going to work a lot. What, what I do you do, think? I do that with like, if I have to remember to write down like a certain number, I might say like five, two, seven, four, five, two, seven, four, five, two, seven, four, until I get to like a piece of paper to write it down because then saying it over and over again, like has me write it down correctly. So it, it just really depends on the person and then what information it is, in my opinion. Yeah, if it's something short like like what you just said, I've done that myself because that does help me. But if it's something I'm trying to remember for later, it doesn't help me, but maybe mm -hmm. it would help other people. So it's just something you can keep in your mind, you know, for future reference. Okay, keep all items that you need to take with you, wallet, keys, and phone in a memory station. This is something that I have done forever because, you know, even way before I would – I had my brain injury, I would lose my keys constantly, my cell phone constantly. So I went just to target and I bought this, this box. It's like a letter, it's a letter box, but it's got compartments in it. And I, my wallet goes there. My keys go there. Mm -hmm. If they're, if they leave my hand, that's where mm -hmm. they go. So there's never a question. Where's your wallet? Where's your keys? Where's your phone? So that, that is a very good one that I do agree with. And I suggest that if you have issues with memory to definitely make yourself a memory station, anything that you are known to forget, put it there. That's, that's where, that's the Bible. That's where they go. Or really important papers too. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing that we have in ours, I'll, I'll share because we like to save money. Um, we have a, a uh, envelope that's for coupons the coupons always go there. So we know we're not, where's the coupons at? Well, they're in the memory station. <laughs> and this, the next one, Ashley and I both, we talked last night and we both have the, the issue for the next one to keep a pill box, uh, to keep track of, and to take your medications accurately. That does work, um, to a degree. I, I got this off of Amazon and it's AM Sunday through Saturday AM. And there's a companion with it for PM and they've always laid on my desk and that's where I take them. Well, as of late, my wife has found that I'm taking the PM for AM and vice versa. And mm. it's not good when you're taking medication, especially for anxiety and depression and all that good stuff, because you could either double dose yourself or, mm -hmm. or skip it totally. And that's not good. Yeah. So what we've done, and I, I feel, I think you said you did done the same thing is my AM medicine is on my desk. So if it's morning, I know that's where it's going to be. My nighttime medicine is in the kitchen. And I think you, you also do the same or something. Similar. Um, I have my AM medicine in the kitchen and I have my PM medicine on my nightstands. So yes. Yeah. You got to find what works for you. And if that's what's working for you, do it. And the last thing on the list, and then we'll wrap this one up. The last thing on the list is to use checklists to keep track of what you've done or, or different steps in an activity. For example, 
make a checklist of bills that you need to pay each month and the dates on which they are due. And if you're like me, and I really hope you aren't, <laughs> checklists are good in theory. My wife is a list maker and she, she'll make a list of her list. I mean, she's very organized and I'm not. So that's where we complement each other. So if, if that works for you, definitely do it because that will help you to stay on track or use your, you know, every, every phone now has got a calendar, put things on your calendar. And there's my beautiful wife. <laughs> that's She's what I do help. is the phone reminders for important events. Yeah. You have to. And even um, work this, tasks. Yep. Oh yeah. Have you ever texted yourself? Oh, I do that because I have a personal phone and a work phone. So I will text one or the other from the other one. <laughs> Reminders. <laughs> I'll share a funny story with you. Um, I've only got the one phone. Um, I have you can text yourself from your one phone. And one time I texted her something that I wanted to remind myself to tell Sheila. So I texted her, I'm at the store. Do you need anything? So it, it sent it. And then of course, when you send a message, guess what? You receive a message. So I get a message. I'm at the store. Do you need anything? Not even thinking, duh, you just sent the message. I'm like, no, I'm, I'm also at the store. I don't need anything. It, uh, what store are you at? <laughs> this happened twice. I, I responded to the same message twice. <laughs> so, and then it dawned on me what I was doing. But we're going to wrap this up and we're going to continue this discussion on the next episode. Uh, some more information for brain injuries. Um, this, this episode will uh, be posted before Christmas. So I want to wish everyone a very Merry Christmas. Happy and Hanukkah. Happy Kwanzaa. Happy whatever you celebrate. Right. Rest of us for the rest of us. If you're a Seinfeld fan. Mm -hmm. And I want to remind people one thing before we go, and then I'm going to wrap up and then Ashley can give her final thoughts as well. You may contact us by leaving a comment below. Please hit subscribe and like the channel that will help us out tremendously. You can also reach us via email at liferewiredpodcast at yahoo.com. And also on Twitter now, I haven't even told Ashley this. She's learning this as you guys are. <laughs> I, or actually, it's not Twitter. It's X. I'm going to call it Twitter. I don't care. Okay. But it's uh, liferewired underscore one. So you can comment there as well. So please get in touch with us. Let us know what you think, what, what we can do differently to make this a better podcast for you, because we are your voice. Ashley. Um, I was just going to say, if anybody um, is interested in being interviewed, um, we're going to do that in the new year too. So feel free to uh, comment below and let us know so we can get in contact with you. And just remember to also share our podcast with, your friends who may or may not be brain injured. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Please do that. So that is all we have for this episode. Be sure to tune in next week when we continue this discussion. And for now, I'm Rob. And I'm Ashley. And this is Life Rewired. You guys have a great day. Bye.